Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com or look for us on Facebook at Voices from the Bench. Greetings and welcome to Voices from the Bench. We're at episode number 72. My name is Elvis. My name is Barbara. So this week, we start a new discussion with two CDTs who are part of the upcoming Whip Mix Digital Forum. Bernie Jaroslow, CDT, is the marketing manager at Whip Mix and is in charge of putting the digital forum together, which is amazing. He's had a long history in the dental laboratory field and a passion for helping labs. He also, I think has the lowest voice in all of dentistry. I'm thinking about actually starting a barbershop quartet and asking Bernie to be my baritone. I think that would go over real well with sing about teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should. You know, once you start it, you're going to be successful. If it has anything to do with people uh, listen to, because you are uh, very smart. I know my wife really wants me to find another hobby to do. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure. (laughs) Bernie talks about his past, what he does at Whitmix, and the state of the Digital Dental Forum that is starting its eighth year. Well done, Bernie. Joining Bernie is Al Falastri, CDT, from Ceramo Arts Dental Laboratory, which is in my backyard in Lakeland, Florida. Al is a speaker at this year's Digital Forum and has an interesting family history in dentistry. They both talk about the digital forum, why it started, and why Al went the very first year. Join us in welcoming Bernie and Al. We'd like to introduce our listeners to Crystal Ultra Fixed Hybrid Dentures by Digital Dental. Crystal Ultra is an advanced nanoceramic material used to create final restorations that are the closest alternative to natural teeth, period. If you haven't tried Crystal Ultra Hybrid Fixed Denture in your lab, you need to right now. Crystal Ultra full arches are 60% lighter than zirconia arches and six times stronger than traditional acrylic teeth denture setups. Crystal Ultra is also absolutely gorgeous with incredible optical qualities. Gorgeous, strong, and functional, Crystal Ultra is rapidly becoming the material of choice for full arch dentistry. Digital Dental makes it super easy to get started with Crystal Ultra immediately, like on your very next case. Just visit them at www.crystalultra.com slash voices to request. Request a sample arch and to get a discount on your first case. Digital Dental offers complete outsourced Crystal Ultra lab services and as the only U.S.-based manufacturer of advanced dental milling machines, Digital Dental can also provide full in-lab solutions for your lab featuring the revolutionary new DM5 XT Ultra wet-dry milling machine. With over a 1,000 successful cases to date, Crystal Ultra is the fastest growing material solution in full arch dentistry and is taking the market by storm. Crystal Ultra, feel the difference. Voices from the Bench. The Interview. Just to get Barbara up to speed, Whitmix has a digital forum coming out in October. We were invited to record, but you have something more important to do than the podcast. Oh, my 50th birthday. Oh, Damn. Well, I'm going to birthday. Sonoma. Yeah. Wow. Dang. You. You're, yeah, you're a mere child. <laughs> I, I like to think of myself that way. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm jealous. Yep. Yes. So Barb's going on an epic trip for her 30th birthday and won't be able to join us. We wanted to bring Bernie on, and Bernie had one of the guests, Al. How do you say your last name? Philastri. Philastri. I'm still going to yeah, miss no, that Nobody, up. nobody gets it. I do, I do. <laughs> yeah, what about you, Bernie? Oh, no, Bernie no, no. Jarlaslo? <laughs> oh, geez, it's Elvis. He butchers names, uh, so what is it? Look what is it? It's pretty simple. It's Jaroslo. <laughs> Jarislow. Jarislow. Yep, that's it. Barb. Jarislow. Yeah, you'll do these? <laughs> yes, I'll say it. 
And you guys are both with Whitmix. So when I introduce you, you're both with Whitmix. Well, I have my own lab. I just do uh, some programs and some, you know, R and D and you know, I, I do stuff with Whitmix. But I have my own lab in Lakeland. Uh, but you're representing small lab. in this podcast. Are you representing Whitmix yeah. or are you representing? I think I'm representing a, a participant of the, of the digital forum. Okay, awesome. Let's get rolling. I'm going to get it started, then you're going to say the names. <laughs> yes, I know, I know, I know. It's Jaroslow. Yes, Jaroslow. Okay. Awesome. All so right. we're excited because come early October, Whitmix is putting on a digital forum that they're now doing for their eighth year. Am I correct? That is correct. Yeah, that is awesome. And yeah. we have with us a gentleman from Whitmix, the marketing manager, Bernie. I'm going to let Barb say his last name. Welcome, Bernie Jaroslow. Perfect. Thank you, Barbara. <laughs> We know we all know on our uh, podcast that Elvis likes to butcher names, so I'll chime in on the names for uh, this episode. And also, go for it. And also, we have Al Falastri. Good job. Who runs a lab in Lakeland, Florida? Is that what you said? Correct. Absolutely. Yes. And will be a participant in this event. So, welcome, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, both of you guys are CDTs, correct? We are. Yes. Awesome. Yay. I always like to point out when people that represent a vendor employ CDTs, because I think it's a huge thing. Um, I think it's important. Me too. In fact, this is my 40th year as a CDT. Wow. <gasps> Congratulations. Thank That's you. huge. Yeah. That's huge. It is huge. So, gentlemen, thank you for joining us. And we're going to get into exactly what the Digital Whitmix Digital Forum is and we're going to talk about the event and everything. But first, I kind of want to hear from you, Bernie. Mm -hmm. What do you do at Whitmix and how did you end up there? Okay, I am the marketing manager at Whitmix. And what I do is provide most of the content. And I also manage the webinars and, you know, all the uh, e-books and, and white papers and all of the things that we publish, uh, including our our uh, ads and, and all of that. So basically, I, I write most of our copy and uh, you know all i was the, gonna say basically you do everything <laughs> yeah that's that's what uh, i tell my boss all the time but yeah right. <laughs> uh, and i do i provide most of the content and uh, you know all the marketing stuff basically so that's what i do here and awesome. i came here eight and a half years ago from uh, vita i worked for vita oh yeah uh, for geez i think 12 years and before that, I worked for Pentron, uh, generic Pentron. And I started um, when I was a kid, I literally, I think around 10 years old, maybe. Me too. I, I basically was one of those guys that was brought up in my dad's lab. And uh, I, I started, you know, delivering cases, uh, cleaning denture flasks and, and getting lunches for everyone back when I was around 10 or so, and did that for a lot of summers, and eventually, of course, went away to college and got a degree in, in education, and then came back to the lab and decided that was really more up my alley, I think. So, so I went away uh, to get a degree in, in uh, dental technology, which I did from what was at the time Palm Beach Junior College in Florida. Wow. Yeah, I graduated in 76 from there. Joined my dad. We built up a, a pretty good sized lab for the time. We had about 55 or 58 people. That's a big lab. And then he sold the lab. Yeah, and he sold the lab um, to National Dentex at the time. And I went on to become the director of education for the Nay Company. Oh, yeah. Company, but yeah. You're bringing up some old yeah. names, Bernie. That's an old, <laughs> old guy bringing up old names. Imagine that. Yeah, uh, but it's true. So I worked for Nay for several years, and then I became I went over to uh, Sterngold, and I was education director there, and then from there to uh, Pentron, as and then as I said to Vita, and here I am at, at Whitmix. So yeah, kind of an interesting, interesting uh, life in dental technology. We'll say. I'm always surprised um, when we do these podcasts how many of the people that we interview um, are little lab rats like myself who grew up in their father or their in-law's laboratory and just yeah, fell in love absolutely. with it. So that's a great story, absolutely. especially um, that you're a Florida boy too. Yes. So thank yeah. you. <laughs> you're welcome. 
And I know uh, Al has also a familial tie to dental technology, and I bet there's people who will be listening to this that might even know that tie. So, so let's segue to Al. Let, let us know all about your story. Man, uh, it's kind of a long story in, in, in a way, um, but uh, let me just start. I mean, when I was, my dad was a dentist, as was his dad, his dad, well, and his I dad. Uh, no kidding. <laughs> let, let me tell you what. I mean, it's definitely some kind of a, of a dysfunctional um, yeah, family, I think, you know, to, to have five <laughs> generations of dentists. I mean, let's face it, you know, this industry, you got to be a little bit crazy to like it. Oh yeah. yeah. Yes, you do. Um, oh you yeah. You put me in that corner. Thank you. Yes, you got to be a little bit out there. So, you know, growing up, you know, my dentist was my dad. So, I never really paid much attention to dentistry and exactly and always kind of in the back of my mind, you know, I knew about the family history and it just sort of seemed without really being said that, you know, it was understood that I would go into dentistry, right? Yeah. Although, you know, when I went through, you know, my undergraduate was chemistry, it was science-based. I got a BS in chemistry at Stetson University. And, you know, from there, I just took off, went to the city because I'm from a little town, Lake is a little town. Yep. And you know, I mean, with my cap and gown, you know, streaming out the window in my car, I was off to Atlanta. Man, graduate, let's go, let's go, you know, let's have some fun. Let's kick back. Yeah. And I saw I chose Atlanta. I went up there, got a little apartment, pull out a newspaper, start looking for uh, some classifieds to see if I can't find me a little job up there. And here's a job for a dental lab technician, okay, for a little lab called Oral Arts. Oh, nice. Everybody remembers Ray Gold. Well, I didn't know who this guy was. They just yeah. said Oral Arts. You know, and, and so I went and I, I filled out the application, went to the lab and handed it to this lady, Rose. She uh, she worked at the front office and she takes it. And I see her go back and open this big door. And there's this little man with a white coat and little little magnifiers on his nose <laughs> sitting there working at his desk. And I can see him. She hands it to him and uh, and then shuts the door on her way out. So she tells me, okay, go sit down on the little bench there. So I did. And it wasn't, I mean, 10 seconds. That door flies open. And Ray Gold, who I didn't know, that's who it was, comes running towards me. I mean, like almost scary, like what the heck? <laughs> he comes running out there, opens the little pass through from the office area. And he goes, he goes, son, you know, is your daddy Alvin Falastri? And I said, yes, sir. He puts arm around me and goes, he goes, he goes, son. I've known your dad for 30 years. Wow. And let me tell you what, I'm like, yes. Okay, I, yeah, okay, I've got this thing. That's so, cool. no, it was amazing because he had a, he was running a commercial lab, had about 30 people in there on Spring Street in Atlanta. And, you know, it was strictly production. So when you got stuck in a job, whatever it was, you did that same job all day, every day, day in, day out. And there wasn't a lot of movement in that lab yeah. as far as, moving department to department. It was strictly production, you know, assembly line type laboratory. But his two sons at that point were sort of estranged. They didn't have a good relationship. None of them were interested in the laboratory. So he took me under his wing and he moved me through that entire lab and trained me in every single department, starting out in model work and then over into, into waxing and casting and then dentures and setups and partial design and all that stuff. And so I was there, yeah, I was there about two years. And that's when I realized that, man, I really like this. I had really never paid a lot of attention to it, you know, and in fact, liked it so much that I thought, man, I want more of this. And I, and I had the, the, the right undergraduate degree to apply for dental school, which, you know, I did after a couple of years there, ended up getting accepted at Georgetown and at the university of Florida. So I went to Florida because it was a heck of a lot cheaper and oh, yeah. day school, and right? Cooler. Right. You know, <laughs> and, and, you know, yeah. and here in Florida, which I kind of liked. And, but as I went through dental school, got in a clinic, you know, and started getting, you know, closer, get, getting towards the end of the program, I realized that I didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all, man. I'm like, man, I, I, you know, I, I, I like, I, I like being the bed. Right. I, I like that. Hey, I like that stuff. I really didn't. I, and so I ended up not pursuing a career in dentistry. When I left the University of Florida Dental School, I, I, what I want to do is open my own lab. And so while I was in dental school, I got to tell you, you know, it was it was a lot of fun uh, doing all the lab work for all the upperclassmen because I could pretty much ask for anything for a gold crown. You know, oh, it was, yeah. It was, yep. 
Oh, yeah. So that led to me um, ultimately going in after after I left dental school. I spent some time in my in my dad's office as his personal technician. And, and who was there? My mother worked there. She was a ceramist. She was very, uh, very, very talented and, and ended up, being, you know, well-known, traveled yeah. the world lecturing with him. And uh, my sister was a hygienist. And I'm telling you, hey, no, no, it, we definitely have mental issues you know, in my family. <laughs> You know, but oh, yeah. so my sister's a hygienist. My mom was a ceramist. My dad was a dentist, fourth generation. I, I, I would have been fifth generation dentist, but, but ended up going into the lab uh, instead. And then at, when he retired, um, I just took over the lab. Uh, the day came when I had to fire my mom. Oh. Seriously. <laughs> That's a story right there. Yeah, okay. Good. And oh no, that was like, trust me, that was not fun. Uh, but it, it was either it, sure. her or me, right? It was like, I, you know, it was just, me. yeah, yeah. We just butted yeah. heads a lot. So the day came where I finally. How do you go about, let me ask you a question. <laughs> How do you go about firing well, Let me mother? tell you what, we, we got into <laughs> it over. You you go back well, there. I wanted to computerize. I wanted, I wanted to go into the future. I wanted to really start doing things in the lab. And this was back in the infancy of all that. And, you know, I got involved in, in, in writing software with a, with a, with a, a programmer to run dental lab labs and, and do that kind of stuff. And, you know, in fact, started a company on the side way back then. This was probably late 80s, early 90s. Really? Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And so, the, if I, you know, and, and she was resistant to that. She liked kind of status quo, keep it small, keep it simple. And we just butted heads on that whole philosophy of how I wanted to run the lab. And the day came, I said, look, okay, you know, I can't take this. One of us has to go. And without saying a word, she took her loops off. She put her handpiece down. She got up, oh, took her white coat off, and she walked out of the building. And I did not talk to her for three months. Aww. Oh yeah, no. Let me let me tell you. Whoa! And then it was it was it was kind of awful. And I was not expecting that. Hell, I mean, I wasn't ready to take over the lab, and boom! It just oh. you know, I, it, you know, one day from one day I'm a, I'm a waxer, next day I'm running a laboratory. Okay, and it's like whoa. Hmm. But, you know, a few months later, one day she drives up and she comes walking in and she comes right over to me. She goes, um, oh, you an apology. You're absolutely right. And, um, you know, and from that day forward, we're, you know, everything was everything was cool. And the rest is history. It just kind of evolved from there. But you have somebody else start your car for you every day. <laughs> <laughs> So, Elvis made a joke. <laughs> so anyway, you know, and and uh, my dad lectured a lot. He 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 went around the world, and and he just had the gift of gab. You know, he was kind of a gadget master. He invented a lot of different little gadgets, and I kind of got that from him, I think. And and uh, I got some opportunities really through his connections. First with Williams Gold back then. Y'all remember Williams and and Vic Williams yeah. and yeah. and Kevin Dillon and those guys. Okay. And my mom, we developed some products for them. I got to know them. They were aware of what we were doing. We were, we, we were, we were small, but, but very, um, a progressive dental lab. And of course, working at the office of my dad, who was a well-known dentist. And it just offered opportunities, which I was lucky enough to be able to take advantage of. And it sort of morphed into, you know, working with companies, Whitmix now, I'm, I'm involved with them. But, but always have the opportunity to, 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 you know, talk about what we do, share what we do, work with companies, do some R&D, that kind of stuff, along with working, you know, oh, in the lab. Stuff. Yeah, it's nice. Oh, yeah. No, a little diversion. So, so I, I guess that's pretty much it for me. Well, thank you. That's, my that's story. a great story. Yeah. Again, another family story. Yes. And um, I just wanted to make it clear to our listeners that I don't dislike Dennis. Um, you know, I rag on them a little bit just because they're a little quirky and they're a little this, but, um, I, I, I can't do what I do without Dennis. So, you know, my comments don't misconstrue. I just think laboratory technicians yeah. are amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Al, out of your whole family, are you the happiest because you're the lab and the rest of them are clinical? Yeah. I would have to say <laughs> affirmative on that yeah. one. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Without yeah. a doubt. Oh, yeah. You know, I, 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 I second guess myself once in a while. You know, gee, well, well, what if I'd have gone ahead and pursued, you know, dental practice? And as really? soon as I crossed my mind, I go, yeah, no, 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 no. I really like what <laughs> I really like what I do here. But you, I got to tell you, though, I think that was a big part of why we've been so successful. We're like what we would call a boutique or a high end. We're only a six person lab counting me. Nice. And grew a little bigger at one point, got up to about 12 and I hated it. Oh, my God. Because then yeah. all my 
time was spent managing people. HR. Try, oh, my say. God. Trying to find good people. You know, yep. you know what that's managing like, right? Oh, oh, my yep. God. Oh, no, no, no. I don't. I only have 80 of them. Yeah, see? <laughs> so natural attrition, right? People would leave, and, and, and we realized we didn't really need to replace them. We were, you know, we were getting better at what we did, and we were able to, you know, manage the load. So, so profitability got better, you know, personally. And, and we sort of kind of you know, attrition went down to, to six of us. And now that was right now. Okay. Olivia's been there 27 years. Roxy, 23 wow. years. Jamie, wow. she, she's the baby. She's been there 15 years. Uh, and then my other ceramist is uh, Candy. And she was actually, she started working for my dad when she was 18 years old. Worked with him all the way through till he retired, and she was like uh, mid forties. And then when he retired, she came and worked for me, and she's been with me ever since. And wow. now she's been in the family since she was eighteen. You know, so yeah, we're we're really a neat, close knit, very very family type of a laboratory. I've been to his laboratory several times, and it really is a, a kind of a unique situation there. And it's it's a very high end lab. So the work is terrific, but I think the relationship that they have with one another really is what makes it unique. It's it's a great place, a great place. I think that's the um, the cohesiveness of the team and leadership, and um, having long term employees like that, which I have a a, yeah. a lot of folks that have been here for twenty five mm-hmm, plus years. Mm-hmm. You know, it just shows that um, you know you're in it to win it, and you like what you do, and you take care of your people, and they're loyal that's to you. Got that right. Same as your client, you mm-hmm. know. So. That thank you. So, Al, how much of your lab is digital? I mean, here you are speaking at the digital forum, you must be representing the digital workflow. Hey, I gotta tell you something, Elvis. I didn't know this at the time. We we went digital about five or six years ago, Mm -hmm. and you know, at the time, I was forced into it. You know, it's the way the industry was going, and and I resisted. I didn't like the whole idea. I don't need that crap. I man, you know, nobody can carve carve a crown like I can. I felt that. that, Yep, that exact that exact you know attitude. And what I've come to find out is that, man, I was born for this stuff. I love it. Really? And, oh, man, we, you know, I, you know, I bought, bought the stuff, got the training, got the three shape. And I knew, you know, knowing me that I was going to have to jump in uh, with both feet. So from day one, you know, the scanner, the software, the mill, you know, got it all. Cause, cause, you know, I knew I wouldn't be able to be happy unless I, I basically could manage it all sure. myself. So we bit off that big chunk. The equipment comes. We had, we had, we had to do some infrastructure changing to find a place to put it because when the lab was built, there wasn't such a thing. We mm-hmm. really didn't have a place for this stuff, but I had no life for about a month. I mean, no life. And was ter- terrifying getting converting from analog to digital, right? But we we did it a hundred percent in about a month. Yeah, that's awesome. Congrats! Oh yeah, I haven't looked back since. It was it's I've I have loved every minute of it. In fact, I was kind of done with. You know, I was I was tired. I was burnt out. I've been doing it for thirty years. I, I calculated one day that I had carved like uh, 28 miles of margins. You know? <laughs> you, you, you know what I mean? I'm like, oh my God. Okay, imagine 28 miles at a millimeter at a time, right? Oh, geez. Okay. I mean, yeah. that's a lot of freaking margin. Going to the digital, how does that move into the whip mix and the whole, you know, uh, tell us how you guys united and being a participant in that. You know, I, I'm, I'm really not sure. I, you know, I know that, you know, back when I, you know, my dad was in practice and I was working in his lab, he was very involved with uh, Danar. He helped develop some of their articulators. I got to know those people very well. Whip mix bought Danar. Yeah. And I think that's where our relationship started was way back then. And then, you know, I really don't know, tell you the truth. It just sort of evolved over time, got to know each other. Say, Go uh, ahead, Bernie. Al, you were at our very first uh, digital forum back in oh, yeah, like, that's true. 2010, 11, and, and you've been at every one since. You used to come as a, a, you know, a participant or an attendee, and now, of course, you've been a speaker for several of them. That leads me into a question for you, Bernie. So can you kind of expand on the digital forum sure. and the whole – what does it look like? You know, what do you guys do? What's the focus? What's the Absolutely. goal? Well, back, as I said, in, in somewhere around 2010 or maybe 11, Ann Steinbach and I had been talking, she's my boss, and uh, we've been talking about... Oh, I love her. Just yeah, saying, I got to give her a plug. Does. She's amazing. Does love her. 
Yeah. Um, and and we were talking about what we could do in terms of you know at the time we were a reseller for Three Shape. Early on, you know, yeah. very few labs had uh, mills at the time. There were milling centers with a large. There weren't a lot of mills oh, you know, yeah. in those days. And so uh, what we did sell Three Shape, and of course we had a milling center here as well. So we started to think about what we could do to help our customers make that transition into the digital world. Uh, and so we decided to have a program like this. But what we did is it was small, of course. Uh, I think the most we've ever had here at Whitmix is 40 people. Uh, and this is more than tripled or wow. quadrupled uh, this coming up. But the wow. but originally it was small. And I remember taking a whole to, to try to see how many people were involved in the digital part of dental technology but you know what they where would they were what they were using etc and i think we had about i don't know seven or eight people that had uh, scanners but if, as i remember now you might correct me but i don't think anyone had a mill that first year that we did this it might have just started and then uh, slowly as years progressed, you know, as the program uh, grew and laboratories, you know, grew into the digital side, then more and more uh, mills were, were being used. And of course, that brought in new technologies, that new technology brought in new, new things to do with mills, uh, you know, new types of milling materials were being developed, and we were no exception. Uh, we jumped on that bandwagon and started uh, making our own zirconia materials and PMMAs and waxes and and so on. And so our goal really was to, to make life better for our customers. And, I, and I'm not just saying that. We, we really wanted to grow together because everyone was learning. We were all learning. It was a new thing. And so we wanted to grow together. And I think we accomplished that. We have a, a group of people that come literally every year to the, to the program. And of course, now we, everybody's 3D printing and, and doing things that they never dreamed about just a few short years ago. So that was our goal, and I think we've met that. Now what we're trying to do is to grow it so that we give our attendees more opportunities. Uh, we, we, we don't just show Whitmix products. We're not, you know, it's not, yes, of course we sell product as a result of, of using the products and showing them, demonstrating things. But it's not really the objective. Uh, our objective was to have uh, not even a really a, a profit center, but but to have a, a an opportunity, an educational opportunity for our customers, and that's genuine. And I think we we do do that. I think Al would agree. I hope he would. Where do you hold it at? We've we've held it for the last seven years at Whitmix, but the, the okay. most. I think the largest group we could have is forty because we only had one room that really accommodated that. Uh, you know, the, that type of program in and uh, 40 was it was the maximum. So this last year, we just got sick and tired of turning people away. You know, we had waiting lists that were longer than our attendee list and, and it became nice. it was good. It was wonderful. So my assistant and I, Rita Davis, uh, we decided we would, we would look into a, a much bigger venue. And so we went to approached a few hotels around us and we found one that was perfect really perfect for for what we uh, want to do and I started the phone calls almost a year ago and we put together what I think is our best program by far with fantastic speakers people demonstrating live people uh, speaking you know with slides and we also have a number of vendors which is the first time we've done that we've, we brought in a mm. bunch of companies as exhibitors cool. And that that helps to to make it even a better program. So, you know, again, while it's not our, we're not doing this to to make a profit center, but we we want to make sure we can do it to the fullest and make sure everybody gets the best uh, experience out of it. And I think we put together a pretty good program. I'll, if you'd like, I can tell you some of the speakers and and their some of their topics. It's, Absolutely. Okay. You got some big names at this thing. Yeah. It's, it's some yeah, really some cool really, people. Really yeah. good ones. Um, well, we've got Ed McLaren, Dr. McLaren. 
Thanks to Bernie and Al for joining us to talk about their careers. Join us next week as we learn more about the Whitmix Digital Forum being held in Louisville, Kentucky. Louisville. 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 It's being not Louis, Louisville. it's Lil. Louisville. Being, he- being held in Louisville. There you go. Kentucky, October 4th and the 5th. Check out the link on this episode's show notes to register, but don't wait until next week. Spots are going fast, and this event might even be full by next week's episode. Now, just remember, one half of Voices from the Bench will be there to record some of the speakers and the attendees. So look for our booth, stop by, say hi, sit down, be on the podcast. We'd love to talk to you. We are coming down to the final weeks before the Race of the Future 6.0 on August 25th. Sponsoring a racer will not only show your support to them, but help raise money for the foundation of dental laboratory technology that provides education and grants to dental technicians. Check out the link to donate on this episode's show notes. Remember to sponsor either Barbara Wojan or Team Voices from the Bench. Yay! Good luck, Team Voices from the Bench. Training up for the triathlon, I went for some speed this morning, and I did six and a half miles at a 718 pace. Wow. Yeah, I was pretty happy. Six miles at that pace? Normally, I do yeah. five laps and I'll go fast and then go slow, but that's pretty amazing. Holy it's moly. It's been a long time that I've been able to do that. My fastest mile when I'm racing is like a 725, so that blows me away, but you're about, what, six feet, all legs? I remember when I went running with you and you about killed me. <laughs> like, oh, I thought I was in shape until I ran with you. So well done. I uh, actually am training. So last night I did three quarters of a mile swim and then I did a six mile run. And the day before that, I, I did a 15 mile bike and a three mile runs. I'm trying to mix it all in. So I'm working out twice a day now. I'm not working out twice a day, but I'm doing two of the either running, swimming or biking events during my workout, which let me tell you, I'm tired. Every day? Every day. Yeah, because we only have two weeks left. I know it's coming up. I'm a little late and I'm, I'm worried. So I'm now I'm doubling up. So hopefully I, uh, I'll make it. You'll be fine. I just did it to win it. I'm not very competitive at all. Not at all. <laughs> Just make sure you donate all the money to our team, not Barb. <laughs> hey, by the way, thank you to all of our podcast listeners or whoever has donated to me. I'm almost up to $5,000 that I've raised so far. So I just want to say thank you. It's been a really good year. So yeah, I, um, I'm, I'm very appreciative and I want to make sure I do really well in the race. So cheers. How'd you find out? I haven't got a list of who's donated. Oh, I'm... Like I'm slightly competitive, so they yeah. eat every time I get a donation. <laughs> yeah. And we raised three hundred dollars at Night Dental. Thank you to my Night Dental family. So yeah, it's been it's been fun. I really enjoy this event and I enjoy raising money for the foundation. So and I want to kick Sean Nowax, you know what. So he's very <laughs> extremely competitive and I don't know where he is, but I'm hoping to beat him again this year. Maybe not again this year. He beat me last year, so I'm coming back with vengeance, Sean, and I know you're listening. Well, he's on my team, yeah. so collectively you have to beat all of us. No, just I just Sean. collectively have to beat Sean. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't beat three people, but I'm going after him. Nice. Listens to our podcast, so he's probably smiling right now. Yes, I'm sure that he is. <laughs> I plan to not break my collarbone between now and the race. That's my goal. I couldn't do it two years ago, but I'll do it now. Well, I'm just saying, if you raced a 7, what did you say, 18, 7, 13 mile this morning, you're going to kill the race because you're going to save all that time in the run. I'm looking for you guys to place first in the relay, and we'll let you know when the race is over how we do. So I think you guys are going to do really well. That's the only positive thing I'm going to say to you, though. (laughs) Good luck raising money. (laughs) <laughs> all right, all right let's get back to business we want to thank digital dental for being the newest sponsor of the podcast we are always excited to team up with the company that is behind the success of the dental laboratory industry we actually interviewed them about a month and a half ago and we'll be releasing that interview in the next few weeks so check them out they make some pretty awesome mills and the crystal ultra is looking like a game changer See a link on this episode's show notes. Thanks for your support of the podcast, Digital Dental. All right, everybody. That's all we got. We'll talk to you next week. Have a good week. Good luck, Sean. Bye. Bye. We're pretty funny.
together. <laughs>